I know it sucks that you're probably not going to have a football season. I know that really bothers you. Yeah, I, it, it, the, 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 the season got canceled already. Yeah. But I mean, you know, at Yale, we set precedents, precedents. And, you know, at when we canceled, you know, the basketball season, when they canceled the spring sports, you know, the rest of the country followed. And, you know, that all goes to the great administration in the Ivy League, because, you know, that we know that like our our the student athletes interests are at the forefront of their decisions. So, I mean, yeah, although it's not, you know, ideal, it's it's in our best interests. So you were talking about that, the Ivy League being the first one to shut down Yale, uh, the Ivy League conference tournament with Yale basketball did end up winning, was the first to shut down for basketball when this whole pandemic started. So do you think that it's a it's a specific thing with the Ivy League and, and with Yale in general, just lo- uh, prioritizing the academics more? Or do you think this was more of a mid-major effect? They know something's going to be coming with the academic hit or not the academic hit, the uh, economic hit and some of the other factors involved with scheduling. Yeah. I mean, like I said before, you know, we're always at the forefront of these decisions and, you know, they got some really intelligent people up there that, you know, make great decisions for us as a student athletes. So I guess it's not ideal and it stinks that, you know, all our scenes are getting canceled, but it's like I said, it's just, it's, it's, it's always in our best interest. And, you know, the leadership in the Ivy league and the leadership at, at Yale, especially is top notch. So, you know, I have full faith in their decisions, and I support them fully. Being a, a guy that's from St. James, grew up in the area, I know that uh, football, especially high school football, isn't as big, especially you go down south, some of the other areas in, in the country. It's just absolutely huge, bigger than, than college football, pro football. Um, coming from Smithtown and standing out like you have going to a big-time school like Yale, uh, obviously no more for t- academics, but uh, how was that for you uh, as far as the attention you got uh, being from, from Smithtown, like, what does that mean to you being able to go to a big time school like that for, for college, for college football? Well, I mean, it's, it's super meaningful. Um, it was definitely not easy, but I also could never have done it myself. Like as any great accomplishment, um, you know, it took a lot, it's definitely a lot of hard work, but a lot was put into like, you know, my friends, teammates, especially my family. Um, it's big for the town too. You know, it'll start hopefully getting recruiting higher in this area because, you know, Jeremy Rucker, for example, you know, he's at Ohio State right now. You know, we got a bunch of guys in Long Island that can play good football and it's kind of underrated here. So it, it definitely, you know, I'm really happy that I ended up where I am, but um, I couldn't really have done it with, without all my huge support system that I have. So I'm really grateful. The coach is coming to your uh, your house and, and asking you questions about uh, – and telling you a little bit about Yale, telling you about how great the school is and how great the football program was. What was it that really drew you to Yale out of all the different schools that were trying to recruit you? Well, I mean, <laughs> it's Yale, so <laughs> it's definitely hard to say no. But um, the Ivy League is a great league, and, you know, I my, my parents have instilled, you know – like that I, I value academics a lot. And that's all to my parents. And, you know, Yale's arguably one of the best schools in the entire world. And it's a super competitive program. It's the only SCS program with over 900 wins. It is the um, top three, the top three most wins in college football right under uh, Michigan and Ohio State. So, and they just won two of the past three Ivy League championships. So it's a super competitive team. They're always in it every year. They're nationally ranked. And, you know, the, their coaching staff is, really what sold me though you know the guys are see it's very family oriented the leadership there from coach reno top down is just phenomenal you, you can't ask for anything better it's it's like a second dad honestly it's perfect i i'm i'm so happy with the decision that i made you know i really can't wait to get up there you play a position in the middle linebacker position that is very well-rounded. You need to do a lot of different things, especially in today's game where you see a lot more smaller, faster guys dominating in the NFL and in college football at the middle linebacker position. So what is your best aspect of the middle linebacker position and your favorite part of playing middle linebacker? Um, my best aspect is probably my vision. Um, I study really hard, you know, film study, playbook study, and, you know, I really like to you know, model my game after Luke Keekley. You know, he's not some crazy physical specimen, but he just knows. He knows where the ball's going every play. He sees everything, every snap. And, you know, a linebacker is the greatest position in football. It's like the quarterback of the defense. You know, you got to be – I mean, you got to love to hit people. That's a given. You know, there's a lot of technique involved in between hand placement, you know, leverage technique, you know, zone drops, where you got to be on certain situation awareness stuff. So, I mean – it's, it's the greatest position ever. I, I've fallen in love with it ever since I was little. 
knowing that you play inside linebacker, and you, you've seen a lot of good inside linebackers, you name Luke Keekley being one of them. There's a lot of great, great linebackers we've seen come out of college, go into the NFL. Where do you see yourself as a player? Do you see yourself staying in school for four years and then maybe trying – uh, trying out, maybe seeing if you're going to be a draftee in the NFL draft or or maybe uh, be an undrafted player and, and kind of swindle yourself right in there and become a, a pretty big prospect in the NFL. Where do you see yourself? Do you, do you see yourself as an NFL caliber player or do you see yourself as a, a college player wanting to get through school and, and going for your career? I mean, you know, it's every kid's dream to play in the NFL, you know, especially once you get to that division one level, it's really not far fetched, but you know, as I know, and all everybody knows in college football, it's, it's not a given to go to the NFL. It's tough. It's really tough. And it takes a lot of work, but I definitely want to make sure I graduate. You know, that's a given. I want that. I, a degree from Yale means a lot. And, um, you know, I'm going to do, give it everything I've got because all you can control is your effort. And, you know, if you give it, you give it everything you got, there's nothing that really can stop you. It's cliche, but it's the truth. And, you know, the Yale coaching staff up there, my teammates up there, you know, they're going to strive me to be the best version of myself. And that's, you know, all I can really ask for. So, yeah. So, Dean, have you learned uh, the lyrics yet to Bulldog, the Yale fight song? I, I just wondering <laughs> if that's part of the recruitment process. I was wondering if maybe you could sing a few lines for us. Oh, God, please don't. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't know the. Speedy, you want to cue song. it up for us, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think. I don't think I, he knows it. Oh, come I on! I don't know the fight song. Actually, oh, I know it's like it's good. Played after it every yet. touchdown. I don't know it yet, but it's like it's like. They, they, it's like Bulldogs, Bulldogs, Bow Wow Wow. Yes. Eli Yale. Eli yeah, Yale, Bulldog, 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 Bow Wow Wow. Our team can never fail. Well, you know it. Yes. Why doesn't he know it? That's what I'm saying. I, I don't Come know. Come on. This is, this, is, this, is, this is 101, recruitment 101. <laughs> <laughs> You're letting us down here. You're from Smithtown. It's got to be better. Come on. Well, <laughs> guess what, Dean? Don't worry. Guess what, Dean? We're we're based out of here. One of our studios is based out in Wisconsin, which is right next to S- Smithtown. So uh, I know all about this area, my friend. Oh yeah, it's a great place to go back to you now. Oh, absolutely yeah. beautiful place mm-hmm. and very, uh, very good. A uh, lot of, a lot of different ex athletes that live over here now. So um, we know John Habian lives on my block. Uh, we have a couple NFL players that live over here and NHL players that are from over here. So mm-hmm. it's a, it's a, it's growing. New York, Long Island is growing for athletes. So why don't we get into that? When when you look at yourself as a player. Uh, and some of the athletes that have come out of New York, do you see yourself as an athlete to draw draw some of these young kids from Long Island to uh, play football and go to college and try to get into the NFL? Or are, are you a guy that just wants everybody to push push through through their high school career, try to get as gr- uh, uh, highest grades that they can get so they can get into a school like Yale? Because it's not easy, like you said. Princeton, Yale, Harvard, these are three of the top academic schools in the country, and you're in one of them. you got a full ride. So mm-hmm. what, is it, what is it like, uh, what is it like uh, being a guy that is really going to stand out for some of these young kids uh, moving forward, not only playing football, but for their college education? Yeah, I mean – I, I really hope that I made an impact on this community. These young kids, I just want to show them that they can do it. You know, it's because I'm the I'm the first you know Smithtown player to ever sign the Ivy League. I just want to mm. show you know that if you really it's so cliche, but if you really put your mind to it, there's nothing that can stop you. Just get get what you got to get done in the school, and you know, work your like work your ass off in the field because that's that's really all it comes down to is just what you can control and you can't you can't control how people are going to play how coaches are going to view you all you got to control is your attitude and your effort towards everything you do and it is very cliche and may not be the answer people want to hear but it really is the truth and i hope that i made that impact on my community and inspired some of the young kids in this in this town that you know it really can be done you just gotta really put your mind to it and you know yeah i just I hope I had that that impact on the on the town. Well, hold on one second, Dean. Uh, I, I I'm seeing right over your shoulder right now. Mm-hmm. It looks like a Penn State Ooh. slash BYU wow. Cougar. I I don't know what it is over there. What uh, what kind of fan are you over there? I don't know if you're a Yale fan. What is that over there? <laughs> All right, so we are a Penn State fan. We love Penn State. My family, my some of my parents met. And um, that's actually where I kind of fell in love with the whole linebacker, you know, mm. position because, you know, I, I grew up going to those games when I was little 
Um, and the linebacker you, like Sean Lee, LeVar Arrington, all those guys, yeah. it's the classic linebacker. And, you know, watching those guys growing up is really really what got me to fall in love with the position. But, yes, the, the little Penn State logo over here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we are Penn State. We are Penn State. Fans. Don't let uh, Yale see that, buddy. Uh, Don't let <laughs> Yale see that. <laughs> it's funny because even, even back before him, you had Matt, uh, Matt Millen, you had Lance Mel, you had Shane Conlin, mm-hmm. you had um, uh, Greg Buttle, a lot of – Penn State guys that were known for linebacker you under you know the former coach who we won't mention yeah uh, but uh, it, it's it's has a long long history even before uh, those you know Arrington and those guys of, of being a, a place where linebackers grew up and learned how to play the game back when middle linebacker was essential uh, to to making tackles and, and being a, a, a real creative part of the defense. Well, the linebacker, I believe, and, and you know this, and I, I would say this, Dean, the linebacker position to me is the most important position for the defense because that is the leader. The, the linebackers are the leader on the field, especially in the front seven. Those are the guys that are calling the plays. Those are the guys that are maneuvering and, and ki- kind of calling the audibles at the line of scrimmage and trying to help the defensive linemen move in the right position so they can get to the quarterback. So that, to me, is probably the most important position besides cornerback on the field defensively. Oh, yeah, it is easily the most important position. You know, it takes – it's a very cognitive position that people don't realize. You can't just have big muscles and push people around. It's, it takes a lot – there's a lot of study that goes into the position each week. And, you know, between, you have to have some very great situational awareness. And obviously on top of that, you got to be tough and you got to be strong. you got to be willing to get your hands dirty to get the job done. But – Yes, I well, agree. Dean, these yeah. guys these guys don't know how to get their hands dirty. So, you know, only this guy right here knows how to get their hands dirty, okay? Because I get my hands dirty every single day mm-hmm. hanging out with these two idiots. But not, I love these guys. I just – I'm messing around. Go ahead, Speedy. So you were mentioning a lot of the uh, the Penn State linebackers you grew up watching in terms of, and making you a fan of that. What about it from the NFL standpoint? Are there any linebackers you grew up watching that you said, I want to – I like how this guy plays. I want to model your game around. Yeah, I, like I said before, Luke Seifu's my guy. I, I really love his. I, I'm sure you've seen the videos of him getting mic'd up at a game, and it's, he he call he's calling out like 40 percent of the plays before they even happen, which is like ridiculously like it's unheard of. And you know, I really like that because all that comes down to is how much work you're willing to put in, you know, for that game week. And he, it, his game is just he's always the right place at the right time. He's he's always on the when you're watching when when before you're retired, obviously. When you watched him play, he was always on the screen. He was always in the play. He was always making some type of impact on the play. And, you know, that's what I want to be. You know, I want to always be, you know, right by the ball carrier. I want to get there. I want to get my hands dirty. You want to be a Hall of Famer. Is that what you're saying? Is that what you're saying, Dean? <laughs> that's, what you're, that's what you're saying. He looks like he's got well, a little Zach Thomas in him, doesn't he? He looks like a little Zach he Thomas. He does. He looks like Zach Thomas. You know who he Zach does. Thomas is? Yeah, of course he does. Yeah, of course. Okay, well, I don't know. Maybe before his time. Come on, before that... his time, everybody knows who Zach Thomas is. He, play, he plays a defensive position. Everybody knows who Zach Thomas is. I hope so. Miami Dolphins, baby. Mm-hmm. Are you a Jet fan or a Giant fan? Be honest. Uh-oh. You guys are going to bust me up on this Steel one. Steeler fan? I'm no. actually... I'm I am an Eagles fan. Oh, boy. all right, all right. Uh, you, you, Errol's second favorite team. That's my second favorite team. Oh boy! So we have Eagles. something yeah. in common. Yeah. Uh, how how did you become an Eagles fan? Well, I'm a Donovan. Who me? No. Well, I, I know how you became one. Uh, how did how did you become one, uh, Sean? Dean. Dean. Sean. 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 Good. Sean. Good. Yeah, I know. You've completely lost his name. I mean, we're talking to Dean Schaefer. Well, I know the I know the lyrics to the Bulldog. Okay. Well, we are talking to <laughs> Yale linebacker recruit Dean Schaefer. No. Now, Dean, how did you become an Eagles fan? Um, um, basically, my my mom grew up in Northeast Philly. My dad grew up right outside of Philly, so I'm kind of brainwashed. They were they were they were they're free fan for everything. So I am I I was born on Long Island. I've never moved from this house. So yeah, it's. I definitely have gotten a lot of backlash being an Eagles fan in you know Giants territory, but hmm. yeah, it just comes that my parents were uh, Eagles fans. Hold on one second. Hold on. Hold on. Giants territory here in Wisconsin <laughs> in Smithtown. It's Jets territory, buddy. We are in Jets territory. I don't want to hear Why, these guys. You, you live here. You, you can tell <laughs> from right. the, the, ang- the angry middle-aged males uh, that this is Jets territory. <laughs> this is Jets territory, buddy. So, are you a Phillies fan too, then? Yeah, I, I'm not a huge baseball fan, but yeah, I'm a Phillies fan. Flyers, you know, so all Philly. Yeah, the whole the whole nine yards. Yeah. 
Oh, man. It's disappointing. Dean, I, I, I still love you, man. I still love you. You're from Smithtown, this area, yeah. so I still love you. 